Can we read some of the Book of Mormon? You're like my gospel doctrine teacher that asks questions, and then they like someone gives a profound thing, and they say, "Thanks." Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got we got five minutes. We Thank got, you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, so so uh, classic. Uh, <laughs>So uh, we've got Greg Trimble here, a popular LDS blogger who wrote the really cool book, Dads Who Stay and Fight. And we're going to talk about atheism. Ooh. Ooh. We're so afraid. <laughs> I'm actually terrified. <laughs> because, no, the atheists, they're like an army on YouTube. They're powerful. Have you seen, like, the amazing atheist guy with the beard, TJ? He's like a... I don't know TJ. I, I don't know him, but Can he's like... Can you give me more <laughs> depictions about TJ? Popular account... He's Welcome a count? Like he's like a, a count, rich man? Count TJ, atheist. Count TJ, who's the atheist? He's count a, He's a count, like a vampire, but he's an atheist instead of a coffin. He just like ha, lays in a pile of Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris books. <laughs> <laughs> Atheists are human beings. They're rational. They're smart. They have morals. They're people. They're still loved by God, even if they don't believe in God. So I think we need to have a conversation about misconceptions of atheism. So I tweeted, um, what do you think are mistakes Christians make about atheists or atheism in a discussion about atheists or atheism? And at Emma Lay Fletch said, mixing up the differences between being agnostic and being atheist, as well as acting like we are better than those who don't believe. What would you say is the difference between an atheist and an agnostic? An atheist doesn't believe in an intelligent designer, and agnostics are just, I, I don't know, I... I'm waiting to figure yeah, it out. I'll honestly, figure it out if yeah. there's if there's a if there's a god, then I'll meet him and I'll say hi. And <laughs> but I really feel like most millennials are leaning toward that area. No, there's no doubt. In fact, yeah. there's a, there's a Pew Research poll that says that it's the fastest growing religion among millennials. Is, is if I weren't a Mormon, I'd probably be an agnostic. Oh, I'd be a Catholic or maybe a Presbyterian and sing in a gospel choir because that's fine. Catholic. So I think there's a big battle, especially online. Uh, atheist agnostics against Christianity, and they say, why are you binding yourself to a certain doctrine? You know, yeah. I, I feel like I can be happy if I can choose anything There's too I want. many rules. Yeah. My argument would be that nobody, you're not going to find more happiness. Do, like, what would I do if I wasn't a member of the church? Yeah. I, I wouldn't go out and do a whole bunch of other things that, that the world says is going to make you happy. In yeah. fact, those things you see are actually, are actually more binding than, than keeping the commandments. Keeping the commandments us? actually makes you free. What are some right? examples? Of I mean, like take drinking, for, for instance. If you were to go out and become an alcoholic, you have now been put into submission. You've become a slave to a debilitating, a debilitating yeah. drug. And um, to remain, to keep that commandment, to keep the word, people say, oh, you're being Mormon, keep the word of wisdom. Well, that it's actually a, a method that keeps us free from staying in bondage to those yeah. to those things. So I want to talk about the the two worldview and how, you know, Christians look toward the next life. Like we're doing we're we're following Jesus Christ. We are yeah. we're living by these set of commandments because we want our reward or either just lack of punishment. Well, many people would say, you guys are probably lost in your thoughts or lost in this hope for well, the future because it's not based well, in fact. If there is no future and there is no God and we are just, you know particles. Particles we're just Fertilizer. 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 Yeah. If Ian had a million dollars, right? Ian maybe just say Rob. Rob. And, I'm Rob. And, uh, Rob. and I was going to rob him. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? you're going to rob him. Oh. <laughs> what is keeping you from robbing Rob? Um, what is it. keeping me? Uh, if, if there's no God. If you're not bound by anything. Then I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, except well, my, well, my conscience it? and my emotions. No, oh, but what if you don't... There you, you have no conscience. You're a fertilizer. You're you're a part. You're you're a, a prokaryote cell that turned into a self-replicating cell in evolution over many years, and you're just two fertilizers. Yeah. Why but, would I? But, just... but you're, you, you've evolved into a higher intelligence. What would? But what keeps you from feeling bad about taking all his money? Hmm. Um, and there is no point for our existence. We're just here. Why wouldn't I? I don't know. Well, I would say it's our conscience and our emotions. Okay. That's what keeps someone as just two pieces of fertilizer. Is there a conscience? Item. Like, how does fertilizer get a conscience? Well, it's... Uh, or cells. Ooh, I see what you're getting to yeah. here. I like this <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. play, play devil's advocate. If, if you are an atheist, an agnostic would say, 
well, I don't know. I mean, there could be a God, and maybe I feel this way because there is a God, but I don't know for sure. And so I'm maybe not going to commit. I'm because, not going to commit yeah. myself to either way. I'm just going to try to be a good person. I know lots of good agnostics. I know lots of good atheists. But philosophically, what would keep you from taking all his money? Hmm. You would say the law. The right? law. Like yeah. you would you would say the cops will come and arrest you. Yeah. So is there anything else? Right. Why do people feel bad for for things? You know, I mean, mm, because it was culturally planted by religion. Was it? It could have been. Yeah. Or there's a divine sense in each of us that radiates with morality, that 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 knows there are commandments and, and laws that are, are transcendent of our time. I think we have to set the groundwork for what we're willing to accept as evidence or proof. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, th that's always what's teetering, because Let's say, okay, if we're going to say we accept proof for historical mm -hmm. um, events, uh, we know that certain battles happened and that these amount of people died yeah. from, from the records, from testimonials, from diary entries, from, from a number of things, from writings, from the people at the time period, right? That's how we can determine many historical events. But when you put in a divine force into an event like the first vision, people are like, that's fake. I was going to get there. <laughs> well, I know, but I, you were talking no, for no. a while. No, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so, um, so we could use that same... You're done. We could use that same groundwork for evidence and say that, well, we have multiple witnesses that Jesus Christ appeared in the Kirtland Temple to the right. saints. And Joseph and Sidney Rigdon both testified and saw the Savior appear to them. You know, we have the three witnesses of the Book of Mormon. We, we know, we have a lot of these divine miracles. That's the same measure of proof we have in historical accounts, so you know, so why is it completely discredited? Why is that kind of proof not allowed in the discussion about theology? So okay. modern day Joseph Smith, eighteen twenty, having the first vision in springtime, seeing God the Father and Jesus Christ. You know, he was the only one there. So mm -hmm. how are we supposed to believe that if he's just making this up? Well, but there's more miracles besides the first vision. Right, I know, but it's an it's something that we base the restoration on, right? It's true, and so I think what's important is lots of atheists they're not nonsensical or they're irrational when they say things like, well, how could you believe this if it's based on one man? Yes, we believe that Joseph Smith was the prophet of the restoration. But that's, that's the thing is you take evidence and you take the scientific method of discerning logic and discerning truth. But then there is also a spiritual engagement that you have to have with God when talking about theology. Yeah. It's about God. So <laughs> why don't we allow him in the conversation? It's silly when we say, yeah, but that's not possible because it's God. There was an interview with Richard Dawkins, mm -hmm. and he is one of the most respected atheists out in the world. And, and one of the world's most hated eyebrow holders. <laughs> <laughs> Eyebrows are everywhere. Come on. He, um, he had an interview with Ben Stein. Yeah. And, I mean, this is coming out of his mouth. Ben Stein asked him, he says, hey, what are the chances that there could be an intelligent designer? And he says... It's, there's no chance. Maybe 99%, no. Maybe 1%. He says, well, well maybe 98% or maybe 49%. Or, why is it 1%? Or, you know, why is why? it 1%? One of the most interesting things I've seen is that Dawkins, he goes and he says, well, there is this compelling and intriguing possibility that there was a higher, more uh, intelligent being or being somewhere in this universe mm -hmm that came down to earth and seeded life on this earth. And Ben Stein kind of looks at me and says, but you can't call him God, right? So you can call him aliens. You can call him uh, intelligence riding on the backs of crystals and hitting a primordial swamp and being struck by lightning and eukaryote cells turned into replicating cells and life begins. We have all of these things happening that are so much more unbelievable right. than thinking that there's an intelligent designer. And it was interesting the word that Dawkins used when he described it. He said that there would be some sort of signature in life that, that began here. And so you have, you have the world's most well-known atheist, or wrote probably one of the most well-known atheistic books against God, admitting that there could be a possibility of a higher intelligence seeding life and beginning life here on this earth as some sort of experiment or project or whatever. Yeah. So there's no, there's no evidence. You can't prove that God doesn't exist. Right. So I mean, they'll come right back at you and say you can't prove that he does exist. Exactly. And that, but you would say, does your logical mind look at everything that we have, our eyes, our bodies, the even the of cells, the, of the, the, the factories within our bodies, 
do you look at that and do you say to yourself, yeah, that looks like something that could be 10 to the 50 second chance of randomly assembling itself out of nothing. Out and that's what I was trying to chaotic, say earlier. Chaotic material. It's much more unbelievable to believe that yes. it is some sort of to the 50 second power that, we're, yes. that, that we've been created than it is to believe that there is some sort of superior being designing all this. If you take an atheist and you say, well, the Holy Ghost, oh, they're going to laugh at you and say, yeah. the Holy Ghost? What? Are you kidding me? This invisible communication? Well, if you ever watch Ghost Watchers, um, you will know that spiritual matter is a thing. No, <laughs> so. no, seriously, though. Back in the day, they used, they used to call it ether. Mm. Now they've, it's kind of been, and it was this essence that was throughout everything. And now they call it maybe dark matter. They have different, scientists agree that there's some sort of essence that goes in all things and through all things and round about all things. We right. would use the scriptures. But this essence is actually used to communicate. And we actually use it every single day. If I have my phone, I'm sending invisible messages across the world, up into the air, to a server that records every single impression that comes from this phone, and it's recorded somewhere. I mean, that, that's just, there's a science behind even the yeah. way that we feel the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And so you say... Religion and science, it has to be separate. Religion and science actually go together, yeah. and God is the great scientist. At the end of the day, I don't like saying that atheists are bad people. They're not. They're, they're not. people. They're people. And I think at the end of the day, we need to understand that conversations about atheism and theology need to happen. And they don't have to be vitriolic. They can be, they can be scholarly and kind and rational. We don't have to be children, yeah. okay? Someone's going to write at the end being like, well, you guys did that during the whole show. Yeah, but it's our show. <laughs> it's our show. Yeah. When you when you, you want to you, you, you create show, a YouTube right? show, okay? <laughs> and <such> uh, jerks. <laughs> Obviously atheists, um, we'd like to hear what you think. Atheists. Um because sorry. I, I don't know, for some reason I have an issue to say atheists. <laughs> A no, it's fine. Atheists. <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching today. We really want you to check out Greg's books, go check out his blog, and subscribe to the show. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're all over the place. We're <laughs> even in dark matter and ether matter and spiritual <laughs> matter. We're all over. God is all over. Who's all over? That sounds like Twister. You know, all over. What? You know references that nobody knows. You ever played Twister? Yeah. Oh, oh no, that game is I weird. thought it was the movie. Oh, Bill Paxton. Yeah, it was like, the, like Twister. It was like, oh.